Good morning and welcome to worship at Wycliffe Presbyterian Church here on August 14th, 2022. Today we take a look back at one of our favorite messages. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the example of saints who have gone before us. And we ask that you would help us to live with the gifts of the Spirit, to be filled by the Spirit, and to always and forever continue doing your work in the world. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. Listen for the word of God. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as those who are unwise, but as those who are wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, always and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Here ends our scripture lesson. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Apostle Paul, at the end of the fifth chapter of Ephesians that we just read today, speaks about Christian maturity. And interestingly, as I read that, I was reminded of a, a certain hashtag that was very popular a few years back. Perhaps you recall seeing it or hearing it, hashtag adulting. Adulting, well, by 2016, it was trending. And in the year between 2015 and 2016, use of that hashtag increased 700%. So much so that corporations began to use it as a marketing tool. But by 2016, hashtag adulting was also being derided, hated, by just about everybody but those posting. See, hashtag adulting seemed to indicate that being an adult was optional, not a developmental stage, but a choice. Adulting really isn't even a word, but you can look it up on Urban Dictionary. And when you do, you find that adulting is a way of indicating that you're doing something that an adult might do. And generally, it's nothing particularly important. So while all those who were hashtag adulting were patting themselves on the back for doing something responsible somewhere, in our memory, as we saw that phrase, I wonder if there was a glimmer of someone who wished to become not an adult, but who wished to become a real boy. Now over this summer we've been looking at the gospel in timeless tales and Pinocchio is just one such tale. Timeless, large, it's been put on the big screen, it's been written about in books, the story has been appropriated many times. What do you remember about Pinocchio? Do you remember that if he lied his nose would grow? Do you remember that he was made of wood sometimes referred to as a puppet, but most often seen as a marionette. Do you remember that he longed to be real? That he was made by the puppet maker Geppetto? Well, he comes to life, though he's still made of wood. Maybe you remember that he tries to follow the Blue Fairy's command to be brave and truthful and unselfish. Maybe you remember how he keeps getting drawn into situations where he makes poor choices. He gets put on stage as a 
novelty at one point, and at another he's taken to Pleasure Island where he misbehaves and starts to turn into a donkey. Of course, later, after all this disobeying of his father, Geppetto, he finds himself searching for his father, who has been swallowed up by a large whale. What a story. And for children, children who, of course, long to be much more than adulting hashtaggers, but who desire to be who they really are, who desire to grow up and be big and strong, they, like Pinocchio, are still discovering what that means. And so today, as we look back a little bit at the story of Pinocchio, maybe we will discover that too. Because there are many connections. Pinocchio is a wonderful tale, and there are many connections back to things that we read and know about in Scripture. Chief among them could be, of course, the Ten Commandments, right? Honor your father and mother so you will live long in the land the Lord your God gives you. Or do not bear false witness. Perhaps you remember a story that has a whale in it that's in the Bible. The story of Jonah, who was sent to tell Nineveh to repent. Doesn't want to go and ends up in a whale. Well, there's that could match too. Or, or what about Adam and Eve? You know, the first humans created by God in the Garden of Eden, sort of a young humanity, trying to figure out if they can live into the form and shape that God has made them. And they're led astray by a serpent in a tree. Then, of course, there's always Jiminy Cricket, the external conscience. and I think that connects, in a way, to this passage from Ephesians. Paul is writing this letter which kind of soars off the page, which sings to the hearts of people. And in it, he consistently lifts up that we should be living in ways that copy God, th so that we learn Christ. We should be living in those ways. Because God has loved us. God has given us the light to walk in. And God has commanded that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul, in a way, is like that external conscience. Maybe maybe the external conscience isn't so captivating. Maybe in this tale, there's a connection with grace that is more important to you. The blue fairy or fairy in blue. Well, that fairy offers additional chances and fixes problems. Extends to Pinocchio the grace that it takes for him to get where he needs to be. In the story, there are so many connections, it can be daunting to name them all, and we've probably named more than enough so far today. And I think in Paul's writing, all throughout this book of Ephesians, he exhorts us to be mature in our Christian walk. He says that we have to be transformed, much like Pinocchio sought transformation to become a real boy, we as Christians must be transformed in the image of Christ. And that's where those directives come, to walk in the light. And Paul says if we're not walking in the light, we'll stumble in darkness. Paul says to copy God. Paul says to learn Christ. And finally, Paul says be filled with the Holy Spirit. And these things are not linear, but each is important. And you heard in our passage today where Paul read, writes, Be filled with the Spirit. Do not be foolish, understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. You may recall in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came and filled the disciples, many in the crowd said, Oh, they're drunk and it's not even 9 a.m. But they weren't. They were filled with the Spirit. 
Wine, along with all alcohol, is a depressant. The Holy Spirit is a stimulant. The Holy Spirit captivates, encourages, inspires, vivifies, gives life to us. Be filled with that Spirit. when we are, when we are filled with the Spirit, much like the Pinocchio who finds his father Geppetto in the belly of a whale and is spit back out on the shore, we discover fellowship and gratitude and worship and reverence. Pinocchio captivates audiences, young and old, because it reminds us in a way of our own journey a journey to, towards maturity. Paul tells us to be mature in Christ. One commentator mentions that, that C.S. Lewis has a similar image. He says, essentially human beings are a little bit like ten soldiers. They have the shape of, of men, but... They don't yet have the life, the Christ life within us. And Lewis says the story of the gospel is essentially this, that Christ became a tin soldier so that he could impart his life. And thus all of Christian life is a story of being slowly transformed and recreated from a tin soldier into a real boy, to use Pinocchio's phrase. And I want to suggest, as we bring this brief foray into the story of Pinocchio to a close, that the command to be filled with the Spirit is more than just a command to Christian maturity. It is a key to Christian maturity. Yes, we must walk in the light. We should copy God. We have to learn Christ. But all of these things happen because the Spirit is in us and with us. So as a church, as Christians, if like Pinocchio wanted to become a real boy, we want to become real Christians, a real church, that can't exist without the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is with you. Be filled with it. And when you're filled with the Spirit, the fellowship and gratitude and worship and reverence for Christ there are present with you. The late John Stodd, uh, an Englishman and New Testament scholar, reminds us that the command in, in Ephesians 5, be filled with the Spirit, is not a command given in the singular to one person. It is a command given to all who encounter Paul's writing. He reminds us that it's not merely a command from Paul, but rather a command from God. And wherever we are on our spiritual journey, whether we're lonely and feeling defeated, or whether we feel that we've done everything we need to do and we're just complacent, wherever we are on that journey, this command given by God through Paul to us it spurs us to something to those who feel defeat Stott writes Paul would say be filled with the spirit and he will give you a new love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control to the complacent be filled with the spirit means go on. Go on being filled with the Spirit. Thank God for what He has given you thus far. But do not say you have arrived. For there is more, much more, yet to come. Amen. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing we will ever do.
the courage it takes to share your story might be the very thing someone else needs to open their heart to hope. Tell the story of the mountain you climbed. Your words could become a page in someone else's survival guide. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you today for your goodness. You have given us beautiful days and you bless us richly with goodness daily. We thank you and we praise you. Through your Holy Spirit, you promise to give us wisdom. Give us wisdom to be like Solomon, to know good from evil, to assess the voices and concerns that daily come at us. Give us wisdom so that we might learn to be accepting of the diverse people you have created. Give us wisdom to be those who work for peace. And when we find ourselves in conflict, make it possible for us and for those with whom we differ to move forward hand in hand. Give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value to you and for our souls to make wise choices. Gracious God, we pray for our community. We pray for all those who are working so hard to get through each day. We pray that you would be with the men and women we know who are going through tests and procedures and hospital stays and time in rehab. We pray that you would be with those who wonder if what they're doing is right and that you would be with those who are sure what they're doing is the only thing to be doing. We pray for those who are working in service of of others in our community, both in the little ways of picking up trash along the beach or the streets, and in much bigger ways, driving ambulances, working to heal and to cure in hospitals, keeping our streets and communities safe on police departments or in fire services. Be with them all, just as you're with us, and fill us all with your Holy Spirit, that in addition to wisdom, we would find ourselves in fellowship, worship, gratitude, and aligned with your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who grieve, and we ask that you would both comfort them and give them a sense of hope. You sent your Son to give us all hope. And so, we pray that we would find the blessings of hope in you, so we may know the hope that is not just for some day, but the hope that is for this day, for here, for now, in this moment, that opens to us. Hope not made of wishes, but of substance. Hope made of sinew and muscle and bone. Hope that has breath and a beating heart. Hope that will not keep quiet and be polite. Hope that knows how to holler when it is called for. Hope that knows how to sing when there seems little cause. Hope that raises us from the dead, not some day, but this day, every day, again and again and again. In that very real and ever-present hope, we pray together the prayer your Son Jesus Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive 
our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, be not a tin soldier or a wooden marionette. You are made in the image of God. You have been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit and go out into the world discovering the much, much more that God has in store for you. And as you go, know that you indeed are as real a Christian as there can possibly be. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.